hello students welcome back to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem it says that determine determine the largest load p that can be applied to the frame without causing either the average normal stress or the average shear stress at the section aa to exceed 150 megapascal and 60 megapascal respectively member cb has a square cross section of 25 mm on each side so the problem says that we have to find the largest force speed that can be supported by this bc member when the normal average stress at the section aa must not exceed 150 megapascal and the shear stress must not exceed 60 megapascal so for that uh, to find this force p we must find the relationship between FBC and P since uh, we want to uh, maximize we want to find the largest force P so we need to have the relationship between the force in member BC and this force P so for that we must consider this uh, joint C so at joint C we can say that um, let's say that AC member is in compression so its force will be acting towards that joint C and let's assume that uh, this link BC is in tension so its force must be acting in this direction and you whenever there is uh, there are three forces at a particular joint you you guys can always assume you you guys can always find the accurate direction because if joint c is in equilibrium then these these three forces must make a close triangle the resultant must be equals to zero so if force p is acting uh, if if force p is vertically downward then to make a close triangle then if bc must be acting like this and if AC must be acting like this, so they are making a closed triangle by head to tail rule. So we can say that uh, that force P is acting vertically downward like this. This is force P. Then we can say that uh, if BC must be acting in this direction, and if AC must be acting in this direction. So we can say this is FBC, this is FAC, and this is that force P. And you guys can say that FBC is making some angle theta. So now we want to have we want to find the relationship between a force of BC and that P force. So for that we, we must apply the sum of the forces in the Y because um, this joint c is in equilibrium now we can consider these forces on joint c as well right so if i draw joint c then we we will have that uh, force p in the downward direction then we will have fbc in this direction and we will have fac towards the joint c this is f a c so if there are three forces at a particular joint and if that joint is in equilibrium then they must make a closed triangle so you you guys can always find the accurate sense of direction and you guys can tell that uh, which particular member of the truss is in compression and which one is in tension so now this ac is in compression and this bc is in tension and this is that angle theta here so we can say that this is angle theta now if we apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to zero upward direction is considered to be positive now fbc will have two components it will have one component in this direction and it will have one component in this direction so let's draw the components of fbc so one of the component of fbc is in this direction and it is having one of the component in this direction so this one is the cos component and this one is the sine component so we can say that this is FBC cos of theta and this is FBC sine of theta. So now if we apply the sum of the forces in the Y, upward direction is considered to be positive. Then we have FBC sine of theta in the upward direction, that is in the positive direction, and P force in the downward direction. And, and if this is that angle theta, so we can find uh, sine of theta. If we find this bc length so we can find bc length so we can say that bc square is equal to ab square so ab is 2 meters plus ac square ac is 1.5 
taking square root on both sides, we will get BC. So this will come out to be 2.5 meters. So BC is 2.5 meters and if sine of theta will be the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So this is the perpendicular and this is the hypotenuse. So we can say that FBC sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. And if we take that p to the other side of equation, so it will become like this. And then we can say that fbc is equal to 2.5 multiplied by p divided by 2. So this is the relationship between fbc and that force p. And we can say that 2.5 divided by 2 gives us 1.25. So we can say that fbc is equal to 1.25 times p. Now, since we want to find the largest load that can be supported for these two conditions, what we need to do is that we need to consider this BC member and then we have to pass a cutting section. So, and this BC member has a square cross section which is 25 by 25 mm. So, if I pass a cutting section, then we will be able to see the FBC member like this. And since FBC member is in tension, then we will have FBC force here. And if if we consider it the the whole BC member, then we will have FBC force here as well. So now I have passed a cutting section. So here we have that cross section AA, and we know this square section, right? So we can say that um, for the average stress for section AA, we will have the normal force in this direction. Let's say this is Fn. And let's say that the shear force is acting parallel to the section area. This is the shear force V. So we must find uh, this Fn and the shear force. And we know Fbc in terms of that force P, which is 1.25 times P. And we know the angle of Fbc with the horizontal. We know this angle theta. And further, we, 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 want, we want to find this cross section area, which is like this. And we know. The square area. So we can say that um, if I draw a line here like this, so we know the straight area, but we do not know this area. So we can say that if we magnify here, so we know this area and we want to find this area. And we have this side like this. So this area is basically. Uh, 25 by 25 mm since we are given that this area is square so this is 25 square mm square or we can say 25 mm square right and we want to find this area AA and we know that if if we know this angle theta then this line is perpendicular with this line and this line is perpendicular with this line so if the angle between these two lines is theta then the angle between these two lines is theta as well so we have that angle theta here as well so now from this if this is a right angle triangle if this is right angle here we have 90 degree then we can say that area a a cos of theta is equal to that area which is 25 square mm square so we can say that's uh, area of section a a cos of theta now since theta remains the same we can find cos of theta using this right angle triangle so cos of theta will be the base divided by hypotenuse which is 1.5 divided by 2.5 and this is 25 square mm square so we can say that so this will be, we can say that area of section AA is equal to 2.5 divided by 1.5 into 25 square and this will be in mm square. So we can say that uh, 2.5 divided by 1.5 multiplied by 25 square, this gives us 1041.67 mm square and if you want to convert it into meter square then we can say that one meter is equal to 10 rest to the power 3 and if we make it square then this will be square mm square 
so mm square will cancel out and we will have uh 1041.67 divided by 10 raised to the power 6 3 into 2 is 6 so if we um bring the decimal place three digits towards the right so we can say that this is um 1.0 4 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meters square so this is the area of section a so now since uh, we are given the average normal stress and average shear stress and we want to find the average uh, the maximum load p that can be supported so we must find this fn and so we, we must find the equilibrium conditions to this free body diagram in order to find the relationship between fn and fbc or that force p so for that we must apply the equilibrium conditions and we must apply the sum of the force in the x and the sum of the force in the y and as we know that fbc is making angle theta with the horizontal so we can write its two components so fbc will have one component in this direction this one will be the cost component we can say this is fbc cos of theta since we know this angle theta and we will have fbc sin of theta so if i apply the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to zero towards the right is our positive x we can say that fn is towards the right and fbc cos of theta is towards the left which is negative and fbc is 1.25 p cos of theta this is equal to zero and from this we can say that fn is equal to plus 1.25 p cos of theta and again from that triangle cos of theta is the base divided by the hypotenuse so we can say that cos of theta is the base divided by hypotenuse so we can say that fn is equal to 1.25 multiplied by 1.5 divided by 2.5 this gives me 3, 3 divided by 4 or 0 0.75 p Similarly, if you apply the sum of the forces in the y, that must be equal to 0. Upward direction is considered to be positive. Now, we have F, uh, the shear force in the downward direction minus v and Fbc sine of theta. So, plus Fbc is 1.25p sine of theta from that triangle is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So, 2 divided by 2.5. So, 2 divided by 2.5 this is equal to 0 and from this minus v is equal to minus 1.25 p into 2 divided by 2.5 so 1.25 into 2 divided by so this is equal to 1 so we can say that uh, minus will cancel out and we can say that the shear force is equal to so now since we are given the average normal stress which will be equal to now fn divided by cross sectional area aa which must not exceed um, 150 mega pascal so 150 mega is 10 raised to the power 6 pascal is newton per meter square now the fn is we know 0 0.75 so let's replace it with 0 0.75 multiply by both sides by section AA cross sectional area 0 0.75 P equals to 150 into 10 raised to the power 6 and section area AA is 1.042 from here into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square meter square cancel out so we can say that 150 multiplied by 1.042 is 156 and dividing both sides by 7 farms 0 0.75 as well or we can say 0 0.75 p is equal to 156.3 and this you guys can see that uh, i have only multiplied these constants right so 10 raised to the power 6 and 10 raised to the power minus 3 so this will become 6 minus 3 which is 10 raised to the power 3 newton dividing both side by 0 0.75 we will find p so we can say that p is equal to this 156.3 divided by 0 0.75 so
So this is we can say that P is equal to 208.4 into 10 raised to the power 3 Newton or we can say that P is approximately equal to 204 kilonewton 10 to the power 3 is kilo and then uh, the shear force for section A, uh, the shear stress for section A is V divided by area of section A. Now the shear force in terms of P is V is equal to P. So we can say this is P. And again, <laughs> we know that uh, area as well. So let's write it as section area of section A. This must not exceed uh, 60 megapascal. So this is equal to 60 into 10 raised to the power 6 pascal is newton per meter square and from this we can say that so this is 60 into 10 raised to the power 6 newton per meter square multiplied by section area which is 1.042 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square meter square cancel out so p is equal to 60 multiplied by 1.042 it is 62.52 and 10 raised to the power 6 and 10 raised to the power minus 3 gives us plus 10 raised to the power plus 3. So this is equal to Newton or we can say that P is equal to 62.52 kilonewton. Now since we want to find the largest force P, so this could be the largest force P because if we increase the force P, that is the load, greater than uh, 62.52 kilonewton, then the shear stress in that section area AA will exceed uh, 60 megapascal. So this is the maximum limit for that force P. So we can say that the largest force P must not exceed 62.52 kilonewton in order to have both the conditions satisfied in order to have the shear stress equal to or less than uh, 60 megapascal and the average normal stress equal to or less than 150 megapascal so if the force is equal to uh, 62.52 we will have the shear force maximum and if someone says that what would be the normal stress then you guys can find the normal average stress for this maximum uh, force P. So we can say that the average normal stress then will be, since we know that uh, for average normal stress Fn is 0 0.75 P, 0 0.75 P. Now the P force will be this one, 62.52 divided by the section area, which is we know that 1.042 into 10 raised to power minus 3. And this is in kilonewton, remember, so this is 10 raised to power 3. So we can say that this will be equal to 0 0.75 multiplied by 62.52 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 divided by 1.042 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this is you guys can see 45 mega Pascal. So the largest force p must not exceed 62.52 so if if the force p is um, 62.52 kilonewton if the force p applied here is 62.52 kilonewton then the uh, shear force will be equal to 60 megapascal and the average normal stress on that section a will be 45 megapascal so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.